Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel. We're today here in Florida. We're with my friend Freddy Tavarish, who has bought the most insane car that he could possibly have picked up. We're in Freddy's workshop. In fact, we're about to hop on board his McLaren 675 LT, a car that I first saw when it arrived here as a crashed wreck with front end damage, rear end damage, a totally different color. He's done so much to this and we're gonna be heading out for an experience to see what it's like, but to go and see in another workshop, the car that he's recently acquired, a car that I'm pretty sure many of you will already be familiar with. In fact, a part of it is right here under this cover. You will instantly know exactly what this is. A yellow McLaren P1 rear clam. Yes, this is the Hurricane car. This is the Flood P1 of which pictures circulated absolutely everywhere. Freddie has bought it and Freddie's going to bring it back to life. Let's go find him. Let's learn a little bit more about this. Head out in the LT and go and see this P1 and exactly what he's doing with it. Dude, we're back. What's going on? It's good, it's good, and it's exciting because you've only gone and bought one of the most famous cars in the world. I mean, a little bit. It's, it's not famous, it's infamous. Infamous is probably correct. So uh, this is, um, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a big uh, thing here. Uh, right now, it's just a part. Uh, you know, you can put tools on top of it and, uh, you know, you can scratch it up. So yeah. you've bought a nice fancy display piece. Yeah, yeah, there, it's, it's wall art. It's We're now... going to go and head over and see the real thing in a moment. But the, the full rear clam of the P1, one gigantic carbon fiber piece. Mm -hmm. And I mean, everybody knows how this happened because there are pictures everywhere of it yeah. floating around quite literally. Yeah, so it went uh, 500 yards down the street and then it landed itself on what looked like a toilet. So it started in his in the previous owner's garage. Yes. The water caused the garage doors to open, Uh huh. I believe. And this just sailed off. Well, it didn't sail off. It went, you know, bang, 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 <laughs> and then proceeded to bang into every other thing down the street. But and you thought, hey, I know, I've got a good idea. Oh, I'm going to buy it. Yeah, I'm going to leverage every asset I have to buy this car that does not run and uh, looks like this. But I, I mean, I'm, I'm never going to afford one of these <laughs> nice. And I really love the story of this car. And I think rebuilding it would be, you know, probably good for my YouTube channel. And you have some experience because yeah. this I think was one of the first cars we ever met and talked about when it was a mess. I remember it right behind where I'm standing now. Yes. In it's original Delta Red, damage at the front, damage at the back. Yeah. And look at it now. Yeah, I mean, we had uh, engine damage, we had uh, electronic, uh, interior, uh, obviously cosmetic. And uh, now it's it's nice. It has a MSO roof scoop that is fully functional. Uh, it has uh, bigger turbos. Everything on the engine has been fixed. Uh, it's been uh, tuned. It has an exhaust. And it makes a, a lot of uh, rowdy noises. Uh, flames shoot out the back, <laughs> which I just found out a few days ago. And uh, flames shot out to like here. You know, like in this in this area. All the good stuff. That's good. Yeah, it's good. Now, I wasn't you, expecting it, but that happened. You just described it as nice. And I think you're underselling yourself there. It's not just nice. It's freaking fabulous. It's okay. It's, <laughs> it's okay. So we did uh, exposed carbon. Uh, where there used to be uh, matte carbon, we did a tinted uh, pearl. And uh, it's a uh, gloss carbon. And then we also did the gold on the heat shields like Ooh. they would be from MSO. Yes, so you got MSO style heat shields. You did the roof scoop. Like yeah. that's no easy undertaking. You did the full interior. Yeah, full interior. And uh, it is uh, styled after the F1, McLaren F1 um, chassis number 22, which uh, we actually got to ride in, in a car track series. Oh, so yeah, so cool. I, I use the uh, Daytona seat pattern, the two tone uh, black and, uh, and tan. I, I really, I love that car. I'll never be able to afford it. But now this is like kind of a, you know, F1 LMLT sort of ish thing that I just made myself. I mean, you, you picked up something that had seen better days. Yes. Say it lightly. Yes. The biggest thing though was to fit the roof scoop. Because yes. you have to do the whole kind of internal piping and carbon work and closing yes. these up and all sorts of things. That was that was very difficult. So the roof scoop, uh, for anybody that doesn't know, it actually does get air from here and put it into the engine. Usually the air comes from here and uh, we had to close those up, but the roof scoop piping comes down here. And then I can't, I don't know if you can see it right here. There's uh, a bunch yep. of gold that I put uh, like gold uh, foil around the uh, intake. So it has, you know, better heat management and that sort of thing. <laughs> so all that stuff is going directly into the air boxes just as they would uh, from McLaren. 
This is so cool. And I know that it sounds the part because I have just heard it. I think we need a bit of a startup demo. Okay. If that's all right. Yeah, that's <laughs> Take fine. Take a listen to this because it's not so standard. Also, I've got to mention as well the rev counter. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, the rev counter. So the rev counter is uh, completely custom. To yeah. Slide into, but you had that made as well to again pay tribute. Kind of jumping the gun on me there, but that's. Oh, sorry. Nice. No, no, you're good. That looks awesome. Yeah. With the F1 style LT graphic. Yep. I absolutely love it. I can throw a few revs out. Okay, I'm gonna be deafened, but no, you'll be all right. Yeah, it's we'll not okay. it's not too loud. Not bad. <laughs> okay, we'll save that one for the road. Not bad. So, should we pull it out? Let's pull it out. Let's pull this out. And let's go drive. Let me come and join you in. All right. This is familiar, sitting on the right-hand side of a 675LT. <laughs> Very normal for me. <laughs> yeah, so one thing I hate is these seats, because my... Uh, these are the Snugs fit. They're yeah. like a touring fit. These are not the touring ones. Oh, so the, this is... Um, my my body is not meant for this. You know, <laughs> I am I am not the kind of... Not that kind of girl, so... <laughs> Scoop is lovely in here. So, off we head. Yeah. It's nice. Ah, it's not. It's not bad. You know, window switches and small rattles excluded. Yeah. <laughs> what I like is that, is that if you, like, you can actually hear the roof scoop. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Okay, especially on the liftoff. Mm -hmm. Now, we were just talking about this off camera because when I got my 675 LT Coupe, mine was VIN 70. Okay. MSO said the roof scoops were available to cars from VIN 70 onwards. Wow. So I could have had the, the first, first one. Factory car and I declined at the time so I'm not gonna lie I didn't have the extra twenty eight thousand pounds or whatever it was. The car was pushing my budget enough yeah, to begin with it was three hundred thousand pounds. But what's interesting about them now is how much value scooped cars have mm -hmm. over non scooped cars. Yeah. Because of the rarity factor, not many people ordered them because it was so expensive. And one of the reasons for that are firstly because it looks really cool. Mm -hmm. Secondly, because when you drive it you get that sound. They don't actually add any performance no, no, or anything. It doesn't add power because, as you said, you block up those side intakes to replace them with the yeah. the one above you. Yeah. So there's no different tune or nothing, you know, anything like that. It's no. It's just no. a small change. But I like how you've done all the parts in the blue carbon, even the central tunnel down there. Yeah. And the nav screen surround. Yeah. I mean, I tried to make it as uh, as cohesive of a theme as I could. Um, you know, everything here was was touched. We have the uh, Alcantara in uh, the English tan um, to, to match everything here, like yeah. it would have been in the McLaren F1, because um, they had like a brown and black uh, sort of two-tone in that car. Okay. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I like I like driving it. Other than the seat that I can't quite fit in, um, <laughs> it's a it's a nice car to be in. I mean, we're in sport mode now. We could put it in normal, and it, it sort of softens everything up. Um, I'm sure people on your channel have seen one billion hours of you talking about the 675 pretty LT. Much, pretty much. So here's a question. I don't know if you've thought about this. Does the fact that you had bought and rebuilt and completed successfully the project with this influence your decision to buy the P1? Yes, because on that car, nothing scares me. On that okay. car, I know that everything is a known quantity other than maybe the... Uh, the battery, the hybrid battery. Yeah, you are the only person in the world who can take a P1 in that state or this state as we're about to see and say nothing scares me. <laughs> I mean, it's listen. It, it, at the end of the day, a car is a car, right? Yeah. And from building this car, I know that you know I still have all the contacts that I had with, let's say, getting roof scoop panels and yeah. and all that stuff. Like, I know where to get rare McLaren stuff. And what's interesting about the P1 is that when you have a car of that caliber, McLaren themselves kind of come out of the wood, come out of the woodwork and uh, try to help you out because it's the hyper car. They want to have those cars on the road, you know? That's interesting. So they are in some way conscious of what's going on. And oh, they are absolutely. They know 100% <laughs> of what is happening. Yeah. Okay. Well, at this stage, I don't know exactly what's happening. So we're heading over to see it for the first time. Yes. To so, actually go through this. Yeah. So right now, the car has just gone through dry ice cleaning, okay. and um, it's it's a little bit, you know, you'll you'll see what kind of state it's in. It's not it's it's not necessarily clean, but it's cleaner than when it I got was. it. Yeah. I I I de um, I de sanded it. Like there, yeah. there's 300 pounds of sand in there. Okay. <laughs> so it was it was pretty nasty. It's not what you want. So then, 
I feel like in here we need to downshift a few gears and get a little bit of sound from it. So I have the uh, the catless downpipes. Okay. So what that what that means is that it has a really nice crack on the upshift. Whoa. Okay. So, <laughs> so when you're when you're at speed, it gives you like a nice little. Um, it's a little bit more stank on what the what the usual 695 is. Yeah. These things pull so hard you forget. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. And I, that was half throttle. I mean, I should remember given how many miles I've done in mine. But so, how much have you driven this now? Uh, about 1,200 miles. Okay. Yeah. So enough to have a pretty good idea of what's going on. Mm -hmm. And enough to have escaped unscathed in car track. Oh yeah. I mean, <laughs> we we flew it over. Uh, <laughs> Essentially over a mountain at Thunder Hill. Yeah, um, I watched that with my like heart in my mouth of like, what's going on? That that was that was scary. But uh, I thought that I ruined the whole front of this car, and it's fine. I mean, these yeah. things are made of carbon. They're they're good. Yeah, you know? yeah, they're strong. Absolutely. Until they shatter, and then I mean, you had to repair this tub. You had to do all yes. sorts of things with this. Yeah, the tub was repaired. Everything was repaired. So it's actually crazy to think that we're on the road in this car because I remember the day that I came to visit you the first time and saw what it looked like then. Mm -hmm. I remember what a state this was in. Yeah. So I'm kind of holding that in the back of my mind ahead mm -hmm. of going to see this P1. Because yeah. I know what you can do with it, what it can be like at the other end. Yeah, it listen. might take a while. It might yeah. be a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. It's going to be, and it's going to be a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. A lot of money. Quite the commitment. I think this is yeah. the most insane thing that anybody has ever bought in this space. I you mean, know, possibly I shifted the game. Yeah, uh, I mean, <laughs> we'll we'll see. But I I enjoy the car for what it is, as far as like an engineering exercise. Mm -hmm. Uh, because you see a lot of what McLaren uh, tried to do in like their the these you know the super series cars, um, but taken to the nth degree. So here there are some plastic components and whatnot in the car, but like on that car everything is carbon. Everything yeah. is carbon, which is insane, and everything is bespoke to that car. There are some switches and stuff that are like the same in here, but that is like a really unique experience, and it's. Just in terms of like a, a science project, it's it's I geek out on it every time, yeah. every single time. <laughs> I think you have to. If you didn't have that excitement for what you're about to be doing, yeah, this would not work. Oh no, for you need to be this invested mentally and passionately into the project. Otherwise, it's not even worth starting. Well, I mean, it, it's also a thing where you you kind of have to don't. You kind of have to not care about how much any of this stuff costs, because <laughs> once you do, then it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, we're good. So let's see if we can get a nice pop from the. Uh... Whoa. <laughs> Goodness me! Well, you successfully pulled my sunglasses off. <laughs> <laughs> they were going flying. So I have the PS4 S's, so they yeah. they uh, they tend to break loose a little bit. So we had some wheel spin on that. Yeah, yeah. You but what I love about those in. tires is they're they're really linear in how they let go. So you're not yep. you're just skidding off the road, which is helpful in a car like this because they can otherwise be very snappy. Yeah, really snappy. No, I uh, I, I really enjoy this car. Um, I, I mean, I don't, I don't do anything like stupid with it. I, I tend to like roll into the throttle. I'm not, uh, you know, I, I know where I'm going. I'm, I, I got to make sure that I have enough braking distance and, you know, that sort of thing. But I'm really glad you enjoy it. But also, you have so much more invested into it emotionally than anyone else who owns one of these because the rest of us have either ordered them new, yeah, spent them and waited for them, mm -hmm. or we've walked into a dealer and bought one. Right. You've gone through rebuilding the thing. Yeah. You've seen parts of the car that most people will never even know are there. Correct. And had to work out solutions to all the problems. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait to hear the equivalent when the P1 is done. Yeah. And I uh, know that thing. What's interesting is that once you can do something to that level, like just getting something down to the carbon tub, then you can rebuild it however you want. Like, let's say you want to change out the gauge cluster, or you want to make it a different color, or you want to tint the carbon, or you want to even add a component onto the car that, that wasn't there before. Yeah. That's something that you can now do. And um, that's why, you know, I can lean on this car. I can d drive it daily. I can get rock chips on it. You know, like it's... 
I know what it takes to get here. So I'm, you know, I'm not going to freak out about something that I can easily fix. Um, yep. So, I mean, I want to drive this car. I want to put miles on it. Um, I don't really care. You know, if if it gets scratches or, or dings or something like that, that's going to be part of it, you know? Yeah, it's part of life. So, yeah, it's just part of life. Just like with your, um, your Black Series. You're driving that everywhere. If you get, like, some... The odd scratch or whatever, like it's not, it's not great, but it's not the end of the world, you know. So each of those dings and marks comes with a story. Mm -hmm. There was a time, there was a reason, there was something you were doing with it. Well, we can't be too far from where we're going. No. And I'm looking forward to seeing this. Yes. Can't believe it still. Yeah. Let's get there. Let's have a look. Awesome. So welcome uh, <laughs> to my 2015 McLaren P1. It had 315 very easy miles on it and one very tough one. A very, very tough mile. I, yeah. I, I can't get my head around what I'm looking at right now. Yeah. I can't quite get my head around, firstly, what happened to it. Secondly, how viral it's went, been. And thirdly, the fact that it's yours. Yeah. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't really believe that last part yet. Not um, yet. <laughs> but uh, it turns out uh, the guy that bought this bought it uh, 11 days before the hurricane hit. Uh, we had a really big hurricane here in Florida. And uh, he bought it for something like $2 million. This was supposed to set the record for one of these cars because it had basically delivery miles on it. It had like 315 miles. And uh, it was this wonderful volcano yellow uh, like spec. And it, it was everything was perfect on this car until Mother Nature decide to, decided to make it not perfect. It's unreal for me to actually be standing beside it right now having seen all of that live as it was happening, mm -hmm. and having seen the pictures well before they went viral over the internet. Yeah. And that was this car. So Volcano Yellow, as you said, that was the color they launched the production specification P1 in, the color of Jay Leno's P1, yes. the like standout color mm -hmm. of McLaren's 900 plus brake horsepower hybrid. Hybrid. That's quite key yeah. hypercar. Just looking around this. It quickly, needs a little bit, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, fix this, fix this. Uh -huh. Is this water? That's what, yeah. So you oh can so you can shake it a little bit. You see that? That's that's good. So that's um, that's seawater. Sea <laughs> yeah, it's seawater. Uh, you don't get that in every P1, you know. <laughs> Freddie, what are you in store for? <laughs> oh, missing mirrors. Of, I mean, glass. I know how expensive these are because I remember a friend who needed a new windshield a while back. Yeah, it's uh, thirteen thousand. Yeah. Oh my gosh, and it's like all the glass mm -hmm. up here because these are the roof glass panels that yep. make it feel so nice inside. Mm -hmm. It looks like it rolled over. Well, so when it came out of the garage, it must have just like grazed everything on here because oh, it, it must have busted the garage doors and then yeah. it just kind of pushed underneath. Yeah. Plus it hit a bunch of trees and stuff. So, yeah. uh, we need, there's carbon damage up top here and it's, uh, yeah, it's not, you know, uh, you know, side windows are good. Yeah. That's good. You know, that's what you pay for in a McLaren. Yeah. Good side windows. <laughs> You're going to be safe. <laughs> Okay, so talk to me here. The rear clam we've obviously seen at your place. You've taken yes. that off here. Yeah, so I've taken this off uh, just to gain access to everything. Um, what's interesting is that the engine is uh, seemingly good. Uh, we have put a uh, boroscope into each cylinder and we did have some water ingress, but uh, it actually receded pretty quickly. Turbos most likely are gonna need a rebuild um, because the only way water came in is through this exhaust. So it's probably, yeah. you know, pooled up a little bit and rusted out whatever uh, was left of the turbos. But uh, the inside of the engine actually looks pretty good. We got that rotating. That's and, amazing. Yeah, and uh, you know, the rest, we have dry ice clean. That's where we are right now. We're at the dry ice lab. And uh, we had the car on the lift and uh, cleaned out a bunch of, a lot of, it's, God, it's a lot of sediment. Um, so <laughs> this. That's what's come out of the car. Yeah, so I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna attempt to, oh, okay, so this is probably, God, I, I mean, that's, that's got to be a good 40 kilos worth of just crap uh, from the car. Oh, my word. And obviously, this is a new one for you because this is a hybrid. Yes. There's a battery in here and yeah. there's an electric motor kind of here somewhere between the gearbox and yes. all the so, side. So, yeah. So, there's electric motor uh, on this engine that's it's bolted onto the side of the engine and that goes into like a gear-driven assembly between the gearbox and the engine. And uh, the jury's out on whether that's good. Um, and once one interesting thing about that is that it is, uh, the way that you start the car, there's yeah. no starter on it. 
So no, you get that click of the relay yeah, as it fires. It's just a relay and uh, without that battery, which lives basically right here, um, that battery needs to come out and then I need to get a new battery. And uh, you want to know how much one of those cost? Oh, I already know. Oh yeah, it's, it's like a lot. 175,000? Yeah, something like that. I mean, I, I've gotten some quotes of like 158 or 127, depending on what McLaren yeah, deal you go to. sales tax in your Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You had a little, little value added or dealer markup or whatever. Oh um, my gosh. But uh, that is, you know, uh, I, they will sell me a battery and I could install it, but I don't get the six year warranty okay. if I do it myself. Yeah. But the likelihood <sighs> of this going to a McLaren dealer <laughs> zero percent <laughs> so what's good the wheels some of the wheels are good wheels? yeah the wheels the wheels the brakes uh Those and the, the, the akibono brakes i yeah. remember when they launched them everyone was like they just put a mirror in there yeah it's a silicon carbide i mean this is uh they just need to be kind of broken in a little bit yeah. but um they're all good uh the wheels for the most part are okay except for that one over there because uh when the car was being put on the tow truck uh the tow truck driver put a hook inside the wheel and it broke the wheel oh. like it just put a hole in the wheel because these are super thin yeah so it just broke the wheel the tire didn't hold in the air and then they broke uh, they uh, ripped one of the tires open too so um i do have uh, i mean it's pirelli p0 trofeos yeah trofeo r's or whatever you know what? i can actually tell you from experience because with my little center incident i had to get a new wheel mm -hmm. and the wheel was surprisingly cheap yeah like they're, they're not, not bad. a whole lot of money yeah so i i have another wheel on order i think it was like a thousand dollars yeah something. exactly it's a lot for just a wheel on a regular car, but for a, a P1, on a million dollar P1, it's not well, that bad. A million, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when it was new. So, how's the interior? Oh, I, that's the best part. Yeah. <laughs> that's oh, it's a, it's the best part. So you open this, and first of all, I mean, I mean Billy, listen. You got PPF? Yeah, it's PPF. So the, look, listen, you you take this off, the car is perfect underneath. Mm -hmm. Don't don't worry about. Don't that. worry about the crack. Yeah. I know so, about this one. Don't worry about the hole. Yeah, there's a little bit. Wait, of there's hole. sand falling out as you open it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get that for free. So. <laughs> Uh, oh, look man. at, you know, you ever seen one of these in this kind of shape? No, I've been lucky to be in a few P1s, but I've never seen one that's brought the beach with it. Yeah. What's that smell like? Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, the video, we don't have the, uh, smell-o-vision. Smell, vision. Yeah. Smell-o-vision yet. Oh, wow. So that looks is... surprisingly good. Cause it, cause water was over the top of this. Yes. Let's not forget water was like here yeah. yeah uh this car was um completely submerged not for long though i don't think it was the, uh submerged for long but de definitely everything on the interior got in, uh got you water haven't found like a line because normally if a car's no. static underwater there's a no usually in uh in copart when you have these things at salvage lots uh they have like a little you know wl for water line yeah. this doesn't have that it's just, just, no, it's just gone no it's gone Under. Done. yeah um but everything on the interior has to has to get replaced like all the electronics and and uh whatnot <laughs> And yep, that's uh listen, this is this is patina. It's it's patina. Yeah, it's character. You know? Yeah, it's uh it's, it's delivery miles. What you should do when you've done it is find somewhere where you can put a little jar of some sand that came out of it. Yes. In the tub or something. <laughs> so what um what I'm gonna do is I am actually giving away the sand that, that came off this car in little bottles for my <laughs> subscribers. Uh, because I think that's a cool little keepsake, that's you know? So fun. Yeah. Um, but, uh, this, God, it's for a carbon tub car. It smells, it's, it's, it's like really moldy smelling, yeah, you know? Yeah. Cause I mean, it's seawater. It's not just like, it's not just being like, Oh, it's a bad kind of water. Yeah. It's, it's not, it's basically acid. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just, I don't even know where you begin. Cause you've got to work out the whole hybrid stuff and the battery. And that's what I find terrifying. Like it's this is bad. No, I, I mean, it's, it should be obviously dead by now. It's not should be. Here's the thing about the hybrid battery is that um, everybody that I talk to, and I, I have talked to the people that like rebuild these things. Mm -hmm. um, there are apparently three people in the whole world that rebuild the old McLaren batteries, not the new Speedtail batteries. Yeah. So they go, you need to take that battery out yesterday because that is a gigantic fire hazard. Yep. Um, but there is like a main relay that I have uh, taken out. I've taken out the, the big battery, uh, the, the main battery in the front. Um, so we're okay there, but I'm going to take out the battery, which actually resides on top of the fuel tank. So if you, if you have fuel, you add sparks, kaboom. Yeah, you know? just what you want. Exactly what you want. But this, has this had like complete mess throughout every single part of it? Yes. Yeah. So this, no, this isn't too bad because we just uh, dry ice cleaned it. And ah. uh, still, I mean, after you clean it, 
everything gets everywhere. So you have uh, the sand. Yeah, but before this must have been coated. No, this was complete. Like there was, there was just a, a bunch of stuff. There was standing water in here. Um, so when we first got it, uh, we had to get this guy out. And uh, we only figured out how to open up the trunk because there's a little keyhole in here and that was yeah. a whole adventure. But taking all this stuff out, we took the battery out. It all seems pretty okay uh, for what it is. Like it's, it's, <laughs> it's all right. Um, it's not the best, oh. but it's also not the worst. I can't quite believe it, but I do want to quickly walk over to the Merc up here. Yeah. Because we're at dry ice and they were just showing us before yes. what they've done with this. It's, uh, it's pretty spectacular here because what they do is they have this thing called a TIG brush and it's uh, this guy right here and uh, you just dip it in a, uh, a solution uh, and then you put it on stainless steel and it comes out like this. So it's a before and after. And um, it's, it uses a chemical electrolysis process, something like that. And uh, it's quite, quite interesting. But uh, they also dry ice clean it with... Uh, they have a bunch of the dry ice machines over there. And if you've ever seen that, it's just, you have these small pellets of dry ice and uh, you shoot them at high pressure and it cleans everything like to, you know, it's how, how it was, new. you know, yeah, like from brand new. So this is all dry ice cleaned and this is a used car. Yeah, you I mean, know? this is not new. No, but no, it looks it's not. under there, it's absolutely one half of it is looking yes. completely fresh, which is why you're here with this. Yes. To go through it. Yeah, so I mean, we, we've already done a lot of it because uh, you know, on, on the underside, it actually looks pretty good. It does yeah. have some carbon damage, but um, we've gone through the underside. We have to do the top side and we're going to take out some of the interior, do that. And uh, then hopefully uh, I'll have a car that I can put back together because we're right now we're in the, in the taking apart phase. Yeah. And I'm just finding out lots of, lots of stuff I don't like. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine this is going to be like you've had projects, the Fast mm -hmm. and Furious Mercy, the 675 LT. Yeah. So many other things. This is like them times 10. I think so. Um, just because I, I like to challenge myself and uh, I've realized that in the past few years, I haven't really challenged myself too much. I mean, since the 675 LT, but this kind of like takes it to the next level. So, yeah. you know. There aren't many people who would be brave enough to undertake this project. So big props to you. That's a weird way of saying stupid. Like bra no, brave is not a way, I would not call brave. it brave. I'm gonna stick with brave because I know you and I know you wouldn't have done it if you didn't think you were gonna be able to make it work in the end of the day. Sure, I mean, I, I always wanted to take it on as a project, but uh, what's interesting is that the, um, the uh, Copart auction, uh, it sold, sold twice. Uh, and it didn't sell for reserve. I think they sold it for like 400 or something like that twice. And then uh, I thought, okay, it's going up for sale a third time. And the universe is now calling to me. The universe is saying, come on, just, just, just do it. It's the same thing with the 675. That thing was for sale for three years. Nobody yeah. wanted it. You know, it, went, it, uh, it sold like three or four times. Same thing here. And I'm like, I got I to gotta take a crack at it. I went to a bank and uh, they gave me a loan in three days. And then I bought this. That's a really smart decision. <laughs> Everybody should do this. This is, this is financial advice. No, Everybody buy no, P1s. I do not recommend this. It's not about financial advice. Now, you have a bit of a plan with this mm -hmm. over here. Yes. Which we're all gonna get involved with. Yes, so uh, this is the P1 engine cover. And since this is the uh, P1 that YouTube built, I would like to have a bunch of YouTubers sign this and uh, people who are involved. And I'm, I love the community aspect of it. So do you have a, you have a Sharpie? I do, I'm gonna pop a little squiggle on this. Please. Um, I should probably not do it while I'm holding a camera to make sure I get it right. Would you like me to do it? <laughs> yeah, maybe there we'll swap, swap roles. Okay. Um, what can I like squiggle on to make sure You can do works? whatever whatever you like. I am your biggest fan, Tim. <laughs> but I don't want my pen to like give out halfway through. Maybe I can just squiggle on a piece of paper sure. first, check it works. Yeah, that seems good, that seems good. Wonderful. Do I have freedom of choice where you I can, go? You can do wherever you want. Like here? Sure. Okay, Whew, no pressure, no pressure. It's only two million dollars. Uh, tell me about it. There we go. <laughs> have you done that before? Maybe a few times. Okay, <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> Epic, there we go. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome, I feel honored. Thank you for letting me, uh, letting me be part of that. Thank you. Congratulate, normally when your friend buys a hypercar, you would congratulate them. Taking and delivery, I, hold on. I, I gotta do the YouTube thumbnail. <laughs> you know? I am congratulating you because this is like literally insane. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what to make of it right now. I need to go and take this in a little bit more. Yeah. And work it all out. Wonderful. But dude, congratulations. Thank you so much. You man. are a legend for buying 
this McLaren P1, and I wish you all the best with the build of it. When it's done, it's gonna go to Europe and I want you to drive it. That would be epic. I might have to come out here and see it like before then. Okay, <laughs> See how good. you're getting on, but. Awesome. Man, mega, well done. <laughs> Thank you. I honestly can't believe what Freddie is undertaking with this. Of course, the videos of the full series are going to be on his channel and so many other exciting things as well. It will go without saying that we've been out here a little bit before he has shared this with the world, but to be able to see it myself, to know that this is the most storied of all P1s in recent times and to know what he has to do. Every single panel has cracks and damage, the bodywork, the internals, the electronics, obviously the dashboard, the infotainment, none of that works, none of that at all. It's all been submerged. I can't believe it. I can't believe he's undertaking this, but what a legend. What a legend for doing it and what a legend for sharing it with us all through the videos, which I for one, I'm going to be watching on the Tavares channel. So make sure you stay tuned to that as well. For now, thank you very much for watching as always, guys. I appreciate your support an awful lot. And I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.